Hi, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Girl on Girl. I'm your host, Persis Abraham. And if you guys are new here, this podcast has been around for about three years. And I've been posting content about my sexuality on YouTube for about five years now. Um, I'm Indian Canadian and I identify as a lesbian. And one thing I always try to talk about is how proud I am to be Indian Canadian because I feel like there is such a lack of representation for women of color. So I try to advocate for that community as much as I can and talk about my story. So I'm so happy you're here. If you could give this podcast a rating on Spotify or Apple. That would be so incredibly helpful. I always feel like I never tell people to do it and I feel like it is very important or I've heard it's very important for those ratings to come through on Spotify and Apple. So that would mean the world to me. I think on Apple you can actually um, leave comments and stuff like that. So any feedback you guys have about this podcast would be greatly appreciated. I hope you've all been having a really, really good week. I feel like nothing really happened (laughs) last week for me. I'm trying to think if there was anything really significant. Just last night, actually, Crystal and I, my partner, we had a really, really sweet, cozy night in. We made a really good dinner. And I made Crystal watch a Cinderella story. What a throwback. It's the one starring Hilary Duff and Chad Michael Murray. Because tomorrow is actually the 20-year anniversary of a Cinderella story. Isn't that crazy? It's been 20 years since that movie released. I remember seeing that movie in theaters with my sister because I was a huge Hilary Duff fan when I was younger. Honestly, I still love her now. But when I was younger, I was obsessed. So I'm pretty sure I saw that movie multiple times. It's just such a good one. Uh, The soundtrack, just everything about it. I was telling Crystal, it's just everything about it was so 2000s and just so nostalgic to watch back. So if you guys don't have anything to do tomorrow, I highly suggest you watch A Cinderella Story um, for its 20th anniversary. I hope last week treated you well. I really appreciate the feedback I got on the last podcast episode. I feel like a lot of good conversations were had and some opinions were sparked up. Someone had mentioned that after they heard the podcast, it inspired them to want to like talk to their partner about the honeymoon stage and like what that really means. So thank you so much. And I was really receptive to like hearing that feedback and really glad to know that this conversation that we had on the last podcast episode really resonated a lot with you. That is 100% the goal that I have with this podcast. So on this week's episode, I actually wanted to talk about something that I find is very, very relatable for the queer community. And it's about navigating a toxic relationship with an ex or just dealing with an ex who has been very toxic to you in the past or is currently toxic. To start this off, one thing that is like a very common queer trope is actually staying friends with your exes. And Sarah and I had actually touched upon that in one of our podcast episodes, I think from a couple years ago, where we compared hetero relationships and queer relationships and how it's so much more common for queer people to stay in touch with their exes or at least stay friendly, stay acquainted with them compared to a heterosexual couple. I find that is so common. And I'm going to just speak from like a Toronto perspective because I'm from Toronto. But I find that the queer community is actually quite small in Toronto, despite it being such a big city. So I would say it's not unusual to stay at least like on friendly terms with an ex. In many ways as well, people stay in the same friend group. So it's harder to break apart if you break up, unless you're like very intentional about it and you're specifically planning times to hang out with your friends when your ex isn't around, just like based on the circumstances. And if you're looking out for both of you and what's best for both of you, that I think is the only way you can really do that. I was telling Sarah that, and I still believe to this day, that I think it is totally possible to stay friends with an ex as long as there is mutual respect and as long as it's a genuine friendship. There's no lingering feelings of, you know, wanting to get back together or maybe thinking the more you hang around that person, you're actually going to like maybe spark something up again. As long as there's none of that, I really, really think it's possible. I'm also someone who loves to stay amicable with people and people from my past. And sometimes, even if it's not like we're we're best friends or we're seeing each other all the time, I love to just like 
leave things on a good note because that's just my personality. I hate when there's any like weirdness in the air or there's any awkwardness. The best case scenario of staying friends with an ex, I believe, is giving each other enough time and space to heal so that you can actually be friends later down the road and there isn't this idea of trying to get back together in your head. And I find that you might not even be you know, intentionally trying to do that. Like you might actually be trying to stay friends with someone, but if the breakup, let's just say the breakup ended like very quickly or there wasn't much explanation around it, if you try to jump into being friends with someone right away, you might be dealing with some like residual feelings there. Those intentions towards a friendship are just not really pure. And I think that can be really unfair for anyone new involved in the situation. So for example, if your ex-partner all of a sudden starts dating someone new, but you're trying to be friends with your ex, it's just not right. I feel like you also have to be respectful that your ex has moved on and they're seeing someone new. And if you can't handle that, then you should not be putting yourself in the scenario of like trying to be around them even more. I think just the best way to describe that is it's like self-sabotaging because you're also not allowing yourself to grow and to maybe allow someone new in who could actually be a a better match for you. I also do want to acknowledge that I know every breakup is very different. So I'm not saying that every breakup needs that like lo- like a long amount of time and space to heal. Like every everyone's situation is so different. Let's just say it was a very long relationship and over time it was leaning into more of a friendship and both parties kind of agreed we're mutually breaking up. Like this is just what's best for us. I actually think in those cases you could be friends with your ex like fairly quickly but once again I'll always reiterate that it has to be genuine on both sides like both people need to be like we are friends we are friends there's no you know there's no other intention here we're better off as friends I'm actually just going to bring it back to trying to stay friends with an ex or be in their life when you're not necessarily over that person is extremely toxic and It's not only toxic for yourself, but it can be toxic for any other parties involved. I'll keep this very brief, but I had actually experienced something like this with someone's ex where I was the new partner involved and it it leaves you with a pretty horrible feeling. You know what I mean? Like in that scenario, I was hurt by that person's ex based on their actions, what they were saying. And it all around is just no bueno. For me, I would say when you're dealing with someone like that, where they're not respecting, you know, your new partner or even just like the way your life is going, that's a situation where I would even say, don't entertain it. And I know it's really tough to cut someone out, you know, where they've been a part of your life for so long. But for me, respect is a big, big thing. And sometimes like when you're trying to deal with someone who has toxic tendencies, it can really weigh you down. It can it can hurt just so many people in this scenario. I guess where do we draw the line when it comes to staying friends with exes? Because I don't know if we always talk about the point of view of the new partner involved. Like, I don't know if that's always something we talk about just because it's it's thrown around so much that queer people stay friends with their exes. But like, how do the new partners feel? Are they okay with it? Are we talking about this? Is there communication? Is there respect? Like all these different scenarios, because ultimately you're trying to move on in your life. Sometimes if you are staying friends with an ex and like someone's not being very genuine, either like it's going to implode or that person who's not being genuine is actually holding themselves back from allowing themselves to be involved in a new relationship that can actually be so much better for them. And they'll see that. I was actually having this conversation with Crystal the other day where I was saying like, nowadays, it's almost impossible to just not see what your exes are up to. And it's a very weird way to live, just living in a world where we just have access to social media and access to our exes' lives. You can see what people are up to and you haven't talked to them in like over a decade. Even I I know what people are up to from my high school and I don't even talk to them anymore. So if I know what's going on in their lives, I definitely see what's going on in my ex's life. And it can just be weird. I feel like when we didn't have social media, it was a lot easier to sometimes heal because, you know, you'd go through a breakup and then you just don't really see your ex anymore. You're not seeing them in person. 
and you're not seeing what they're up to online. That would be very, very rare. But now we see everything on Instagram. We see everything on TikTok. And I just don't think that's natural. So in those scenarios, I know you can block someone off social media. You can mute them. You can do all these things. But there's just so many ways. Like we can gain access to like what someone's doing. And I just find that like very, very damaging. So where do we draw the line where it's like, You obviously want to be kind and respectful and you also want to acknowledge this ex was like a big part of your life at one point. But how do you draw the line where it's affecting your new relationship? For me, it's about always moving forward in these scenarios. And if someone isn't being respectful in these situations, you just have to cut it out. You really, really do. Otherwise, it's just going to be like a constant cycle. There was a conversation I actually had with my therapist just about why some of these toxic traits are so present in people. Or you can even know someone's not good for you or just the relationship didn't work out. You guys weren't compatible. You have different values, etc. And that's why you broke up. But there's also sometimes like an element of control that some people have. And we should ask ourselves like, why? Why do we do that? You know what I mean? If you have been in someone's life for a very long time and you dated them, but you kind of know you were just not good for each other. It just wasn't, it wasn't working out. The relationship, there was so many problems. Maybe there was trust that was lost. There was all these different factors where it ended up not being the most genuine loving relationship anymore, why do we still want to hold on to that? Like, we should really ask ourselves that. And is is it that we, like, can't let them go because it's, like, a form of control? Because I think it's very important to allow people to just be happy. Like, as generic as that might sound, like, you should be wanting your ex to just genuinely, like, do well and succeed And even if it's like, you know what, we don't talk anymore, we kind of ended on bad terms, always just wishing them well from afar, I think is a really good thing to do. Like, you don't wish bad on them, you don't wish ill will, it's just just better for them to be out of your life. But when I was talking to my therapist about the control aspect, it's, it's just a... it's just a tactic. Like, maybe it's a form of, like, safety you might feel in, like, knowing that that person was always, always around before. But really look into yourself and see if that's something you've you've even caught yourself doing. Why do we try to make things work so badly when, you know what, deep down we know it's just not going to work out? So this is something I kind of wanted to sum up too, is like, how do you navigate a toxic ex when you have a new partner? One, it's very important to treat your new relationship with respect and love and trust, despite maybe the history or friendship that you had with an ex. I think if they are not respectful to your new partner, honestly, they were never really your friend to begin with because if they were your friend, they would be happy for you if you were happy. I also find in some cases, and I'd be curious to know if you guys feel the same way, sometimes when there's a lot of history with someone or you're dealing with like a like a toxic ex who like maybe has a lot of history with your new partner and like they might try to prove things to you where they are making backhanded comments or saying things like, oh, well, I know so-and-so likes this or I know them best because I've been in their life for like X amount of years. I find that like extremely unnecessary. And I also feel like that's another tactic to show I know this person better than you. I think it can trigger a lot of like insecurities for a new partner involved. And would you even want an ex around who's like showing up with that kind of energy and is disrespectful to your new partner? It's just like an unhealthy scenario all around. It's definitely not good. There's an ulterior motive there and it's just not genuine and you need to be very, very wary of people who are like that. It's um, not really in my character to to be cutting people off. It's it's really not. I've never liked that. It actually kind of makes me uncomfortable. But over the year, or I guess like the last couple years, I've been trying to be very mindful of like who I keep in my circle and what's like really serving you and like filling up your cup like who are the people who bring you joy and i also feel like in the past maybe my situationship ended and it's fine it's not like it really ended on bad terms but when i would be trying to stay friends with someone after the fact i would always think like why am i trying to do that like i almost feel like it was my personality to just always be friends with people just they're always welcome always come around it's all good it's this like 
I just never wanted to be on bad terms. But sometimes cutting someone out doesn't mean you're on bad terms. It just means that like you are setting boundaries and you're looking out for your overall well-being. As we're getting older, it's it's important to be intentional with who is around you because energy is huge. I'm a big believer in who you let into your life can really affect like the things that happen to you as well. So if you're just trying to keep an ex around because you want them to be your friend or you're like, you know what, they we had a lot of history. There was a lot of friendship there. I just don't want to cut them out. But they are being toxic and they have toxic tendencies. I wouldn't even bother because slowly their energy is going to start rubbing off on you and it's probably going to start causing unnecessary fights or it's just going to be a situation where you, you're you not growing anymore and you're not moving forward. Like you're kind of say, staying stagnant in that. It's kind of like that saying where, you know, you say people are in your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime and not everyone is meant to be in your life for a lifetime. And that's OK. It's OK to come to terms with that. I feel once again, I, I would struggle with that. I would be like, well, why? Like it was a good connection, even if it didn't work out romantically it doesn't mean that they can't be in my life anymore like I still want them to be my friend but at the same time if they're not bringing anything good into your life to like help motivate you they're if if they're not doing any any of those things like bye bye I'm sorry one thing I also wanted to talk about too is like words sometimes mean nothing in these scenarios I think an ex can be telling you all these things like don't worry I'm over it I just see you as a friend like I'm so happy for you I I'm happy for you and your new partner, et cetera, et cetera. Words are just words. Really, really pay attention to their actions and how they actually treat your new partner, how they treat you when you're talking about your your new relationship and things you're like looking forward to in life. Really pay attention to those things because that can also be very, very telling if that person has genuine, like pure intentions for you. Actually, another thing I wanted to talk about, and this kind of falls in, in line with like the self-sabotaging thing is when you're constantly lurking your ex-partner and lurking their life. I know it's so easy to do this because we have access to everything, like I just talked about. You open up your social media app, you see the lineup of stories, and your ex might be in that lineup of stories, or you're seeing what's going on in feed. Sometimes when you are constantly lurking, or if, you're fe- if you feel yourself like checking up on them, that's only holding you back. It's so easy now. People do all the things. They'll sometimes create even like fake accounts or they'll lurk through other accounts they have, other pages. And it's just not going to do you any good. When you're doing this, you are subconsciously holding yourself back from moving on. Like I find that there's a difference between like seeing what your ex has done and you acknowledge it and you just move on. But it's so easy, like especially if you're muted or you're or you you blocked them or whatever. But if you still have access, like let's say they have a public page or they're promoting their page on something else or you have like mutual friends, whatever, like it's very easy to gain access to information. So I would ask yourself, like, why do you do these things? And I think like we've all been guilty of it. I'm not trying to even say like I've never lurked an ex like, oh, my God. Yes, I have. I was actually even telling Crystal about a scenario like a few years ago where like a situationship ended but right when it had ended I was lurking that person's page a lot and we didn't end things on bad terms like I was very respectful she was respectful of me it's not like we were being awful to each other and she had also actually moved on in that scenario but I found like when I was lurking her because I kind of wanted to know what was going on in her life it wasn't doing me any good. Like if anything, it was actually really holding me back to like continue living my life and trying to meet other people. I I caught myself doing that and I was like, no, 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 that's not good. And as much as you might want to like see what they're up to because you still care about that person, I would even suggest if you find yourself doing that, take a clean break. Take a clean break and then eventually you might get to this point where You might see their content and you're not like constantly checking. You'll notice like time does heal and it's not to say that healing is linear. It's not. Sometimes like you'll have up moments, you'll have down moments, you'll have moments when you're like, I'm really happy right now. And then the next day it could just be a completely different scenario. That's totally fine. 
that's just something I wanted to point out just in, in our talks about social media because it's so weird. Like, I actually don't like that all of us have access to this stuff or like you can even see if someone's lurking you this much. You know what I mean? Like, let's say you're trying to, you're navigating like a toxic ex and you're in your relationship. You can notice these things, right? And it can just be like very uncomfortable as individuals and like really doing the work on yourself and really like leaning into yourself and your values and what you want and also what you can attract in your life. Once you really let that part of yourself go and you let go of something you're holding on to, you'd be amazed at what doors can open up for you. And I feel like I was definitely in a scenario or met multiple scenarios, I think, like in my mid-20s, early to like mid-20s, where I was someone who always would like reminisce on the past or always think like, what if or why didn't this work out? All these things. But once I really started to like just allow myself to be so happy in my own company and just focus on me, focus on my hobbies, focus on my really good friendships in my life, that's when the relationship door really did open for me. And I met Crystal. That's how our relationship really blossomed and became something really beautiful. So I always just am such a believer that the universe does have a plan for you. The universe is looking out for you and we should really trust it. You know, I would sometimes have thoughts and be like, oh, why, why are things just not working out for me? But I think they weren't for a reason, but I was meant to learn through those people. You know, people are lessons. Our relationships are always lessons and the hope is to become stronger after the fact, you know, and if you keep dwelling on a situation that didn't work out or you're constantly like putting your energy in into something that's not reciprocal you're only gonna feel stuck it's just not gonna do you any good i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and i would love to know your thoughts on um what you would do if you were dealing with a toxic ex or if you're the new partner and you're dealing with your partner's toxic ex like i feel like there's so many like facets here because in the queer community i just feel like everyone is so intertwined so there's definitely a lot of scenarios but i would love to know your thoughts and if there's anything um like what advice you also have for people who are going through this or they're trying to navigate a toxic ex thank you so much for tuning into this podcast once again i really really appreciate it i'm gonna drop new episodes every single monday and if you have a moment um, I'll just repeat this again. Please leave a review on Spotify or Apple. It would mean so much to me and I would love to hear your feedback. Just a quick side note, you guys probably can tell that I'm recording in my bedroom and um, our two cats, Beso and Soul, are chilling in here. Soul actually just ran out, but Beso's in here and I was just thinking, like as I was setting up the recording, I was like, I do not have the heart to close the bedroom door. Usually I like to do that though because, you know, it's like better for the sound and stuff. But I was like, oh, I'm just like open to them like coming in and out, chilling, maybe making a little appearance on the podcast because they are just so cute. They are so cute. The loves of mine and Crystal's lives. Beso is a domestic black short-haired cat. He is so cute. The most affectionate boy you'll ever meet. He, We actually adopted him as our first cat together last May. He's just sitting over there. So I'm just like staring at him lovingly. But um, it's been over a year since we've had him. And then we adopted Soul to keep Beso company last December. And it's been so perfect, the perfect little addition to our family because they love each other so much. They're always cuddling, always playing together. It's it's perfect. It's really nice for, you know, them to be each other's companions. And Soul is a Russian blue. So she's just very like laid back. She's sweet. Um, I guess I should say laid back in like in, in some ways. She also can be very hyper and runs around, especially at night, like at 3 a.m. kind of vibe, which can be a lot. But I love them so much. Um, another thing, too, is that I'm wearing a sweater that Crystal and I designed. It's called Soul Luna Apparel. And here you might not be able to you might not be able to see it too well, but it's a sun and a moon kind of like you know, about to kiss. It's giving like queer vibes over here. They're both very feminine presenting. And we kicked off this line. Oh, I want to say it was earlier this year we kicked off this line and it was really, really 
fun. It's It's been so exciting. But we are just doing some maintenance updates on our website right now. And we're looking into getting some new inventory. Soul Luna is paused for right now, but we're going to be coming back sooner than later with some new items. So we're really excited to get started on that again. I hope you guys have a really, really good rest of your week and I'll see you next Monday.